Good morning, y'all. I'm Zoe with Chestnut Hills Farmstead, and I'm so happy to have you with us this morning. Uh, we're out here at the farm. We're going to feed the animals, and then I'm going to take you guys home. We're going to make some cinnamon rolls, some sticky buns, and some dinner rolls. So I hope you guys stick around, and let's do this. <music> So yesterday we processed 24 Cornish Cross, which are our broiler chickens. So this morning I am moving the little babies. I'm gonna move them into the big house and get the big house all set up so that we have more room for them in that house. just got all the baby chickens rounded up and everybody's in their new house that was fun um, the ducks have been fed the geese are fed now we're gonna hop in the car drive down the pasture and we're gonna feed all the pigs and then we're gonna go visit with the goats and the donkeys for a few minutes good morning Porky Porky Porky's got some food now. He's good, got clean grass, fresh water, hay. Porky, can you tell everybody hey? Hey Porky. All right. So we got Porky over there with, he's over here near the baby pigs. Oh, that was hot. That yellow line is hot. What are y'all doing? What are y'all doing? You're eating my sh Here, baby. We've had so many people suggesting names for the baby pigs, and there are some really cute ones. We are gonna wait a few more days and then after the holidays, we're gonna make some decisions and let you guys know what we decided. We've been spending a lot of time with these little girls, um, just sitting in here offering some treats. They haven't gotten close enough to us to take them yet, but it's going to happen. They're ready to eat, so I don't have any other kids with me. It's pretty quiet out here other than the wind. So we're going to see if we can get some donkey love today. If not, it'll take some time, and that's okay too. We just want them to trust us. Oliver screaming for some attention and you know mommy's got treats mommy's always got the treats oh, let's see. Gypsy y'all ready to eat 
Yeah, I want some treats. Want some treats? Mama's got you treats. Come here, sweet girls. So the farm where these sweet girls came from, they've never been anywhere else. They've always just lived at that farm. That's where they were born. And that's where they've been for the last year and a half to two years. They had never seen a trailer before. So traveling here to our farm, which wasn't about 10 miles, was a big scary thing. You can see she's really wanting some snacks right now. She's trying to get to my bucket. All we can do is just keep trying with them and they're eventually going to come around. Alright, so everybody's been fed. Everybody's got water. Everybody seems to be happy because it's pretty quiet except for all the wind. So let's go back home. I'm going to clean up. I'm going to change clothes, wash my hands, and we are going to make some goodies in the kitchen today. Good morning, y'all. Okay, so we've already been to the farm, and we've already got all the animals fed, so now we're back home at our little hodgepodge kitchen, and we are going to make some dinner rolls, and I've got to make some cinnamon roll dough that I'm going to make cinnamon rolls in one pan, and we're going to make sticky buns in another pan. So we're gonna go ahead and start with the dinner rolls dough because that dough takes a lot longer to rise. So for this, we're gonna need two cups of warm water, one packet of active dry yeast, a fourth cup of honey or sugar. I usually use sugar just because it's plentiful, it doesn't cost a lot, but honey works really well too. You need two teaspoons of salt, two tablespoons of oil, and four to five and a half cups of flour, just depending on how sticky your dough is to get it to come to the right consistency. I usually do the first three cups with bread flour, and then I do the rest with all-purpose flour, I found to me that has the best um, taste and texture that I was looking for. So let's get started and get our dough rising. I have two cups of warm water. We are going to put in one package of active dry yeast. And we are going to sprinkle in just a little bit of our sugar because sugar activates yeast. And we are going to wait and watch this bubble. Once it starts to bubble, it'll take a few minutes and then we know that the yeast, yeast was activated. Okay, so as you can see, this is very foamy. That means our yeast is activated and we are ready to make bread. All right, so we're gonna put in a fourth cup of sugar. We're gonna put in salt. We're gonna put in two tablespoons and this is just um, this is olive oil you can use vegetable oil 
you can use canola oil I always use olive oil when I cook and then we're gonna start adding flour half a cup one cup or three all right I'm using my dough hook and we're gonna let that incorporate first. Once that gets incorporated good, then we'll start adding in our all-purpose flour. I'm gonna do it a cup at a time for the first two cups and then we will start doing a half a cup until we get to the consistency that we want. go ahead and knock some of this flour down. I know it'll get incorporated, but I always worry about having lumps. Half a cup. One. So now we're on four cups of flour. All right. See how it's starting to come together a little bit, but it's still very, very moist. So that's four and a half. Five. We should start seeing a dough ball forming. Okay. So as you can see, it's still very moist. What I like to do is I like to get my hands in here and I like to start working it. Make sure all that flour is getting incorporated. All right. So see how it's very sticky on my hands. I'm not. We do not want that. So let's put another half a cup. What I'm going to do is I'm going to remove the dough hook. And I'm going to do it by hand. I'm just going to work this dough. It's messy. It is. That smell that we're going to smell in just a little bit all through this house makes it worth it. And the smile on the lady who ordered these is going to be worth it. When I sell breads and cinnamon rolls or anything that requires yeast, I usually give them the option of baking it at home because, you know, part of the experience is achieving that smell that you get all through your house, too. She has opted to bake these so what she will do is she will put them in the refrigerator and her cinnamon rolls and she's gonna pull them out an hour before she's ready to bake them that will allow them to rise some more they're gonna rise very slow and that's something that you might not know is that when you leave something in the refrigerator to rise it actually develops even more flavor because it's not in a big hurry and the flavor develops a lot more. These are going to sit in the refrigerator overnight and she's going to bake them tomorrow for their dinner and they are going to just make her whole house smell so good. We have our dough. We have a clean metal bowl. We're going to just oil it real good. And what we're going to do, we're going to take our dough out. Right in there, pretty clean. Not a lot of cleanup. So what I do is I just kind of roll my dough. Just kind of roll the dough around on the oil. That way, as this rises, it won't stick. What I'm gonna do is stick this inside the oven and I'm gonna let it rise for about two hours. And then we will come back and we will finish up this video. So we're going to go ahead and get started with our cinnamon rolls. You're going to need a cup of warm milk, um, two and a half teaspoons of your instant dry yeast, two eggs at room temperature, a third cup of salted butter, a half a cup of granulated sugar, some salt, and four and a half, give or take, cups of all-purpose flour. So I'm going to move you over to the stove and we're going to go ahead and get started mixing all that up and getting that ready too. Okay, so we are going to put our warm milk in. 
I'm gonna go ahead and add a pinch of sugar just to activate our yeast and you can use the prepackaged instant yeast um, packs I don't have any more of those but I usually buy yeast by the pound so I am gonna use my measuring cup and I'm gonna measure out the right amount of yeast out of my Ziploc because I keep yeast in the refrigerator helps it last longer it doesn't die off so I'm gonna need two and a half of these and a half we're gonna give that a good little whisk we're gonna give that a couple of minutes to activate all right you guys so our yeast has proof we are going to add in a half a cup of sugar we are going to add a third cup of very soft butter and two eggs. Fresh from the farm, of course. So, we are going to mix this up really well. No, the butter has not broken down yet because the butter is soft. It is not, it's not melted. So we are going to add in four cups of flour. Four. Okay. So let's mix it all up slowly at first. I'm going to go ahead and add in some salt too. I usually just eyeball salt. You should see it's really coming together. We are going to be on medium for about five minutes. Yeah, that's what we want. We want elastic and smooth. What I'm going to do is I'm going to turn the dough out onto a paper plate and wash my mixer bowl and I'm going to use the mixer bowl for rising our dough. Okay, so what we're doing is basically the same general idea for this one as we did for the other. We are going to just put a little bit of oil in there. We are going to put all of our dough into our old pan. And I'm just going to use my little spatula because this dough is a little more tacky than our other one was. All right. Put the bowl in the oven with our bread bowl. And it's going to stay in there for about 30 minutes and then we will see which one is ready to work on next. Uh, the and bread dough has risen and it is ready. See how much it's risen? Because we're going to go ahead and work on some rolls. I like to knock all the air out of it that I can. I'm making, you can, with this one dough, we can get two pans of rolls or two loaves of bread. So I'm gonna go ahead and spray my pan because these are our requests. So I like to just tear some off. I roll them, roll them into little balls. While I'm doing this, I'll tell you a little bit. I went to visit my grandmother yesterday. Um, she lives, lives about an hour and a half away. And she requested a pan of cinnamon rolls. I will try my best to insert a picture right now of me giving her her cinnamon rolls. My grandmother is 89 years old. And all the sweets that I've made, she has taught me most of those. She is just an old lady. She's from Wisconsin, but grew up in the South. And she 
does all the cooking and the baking and if you want something savory you don't go to her if you want something sweet she's got you covered um, she doesn't get to do that now she's got a lot of arthritis in her hands um, she sews a good bit and has made us a blanket just about every year makes all the children grandchildren great-grandchildren a blanket every year we are just very fortunate to have her still um, and in the health that she's in she's doing really well so as you can see these are not perfect i've just kind of eyeballed everything um, the only thing we're going to do different is on these we are adding a topping to them for these rolls it was requested that i add everything bagel seasoning this stuff is awesome on everything. We eat it a lot on our rolls, in our rolls. You just take it, it's got like sesame seeds, onion powder, garlic powder, but it is really the best. And I always put it on, and that way as the rolls rise, they will cover themselves in what's fallen over the edge. And then when you bake it and you add butter, it is delicious. These are now ready to do their second rise. Um, I will stick one in the refrigerator uh, for Miss Marcy, and then we will bake the other ones so that we have a final product. So I'm going to let these rise, and then I will see you in just a little bit when we get ready to do cinnamon rolls. So we are gonna go ahead and make the topping that is for um, the sticky buns because you have to put it underneath the pan before you put the buns down. So I wanted to go ahead and get that in the pan and have that ready going and out of the way. So this is um, 3 fourths cup of melted butter. We are going to mix in 1 and a fourth cup of brown sugar. fourth so we need a third of a cup perfect sticky buns need to be sticky right it says about a teaspoon of cinnamon I usually just eyeball cinnamon okay we're gonna add in some salt And now we are going to add in one and a half cups of chopped pecans. Half. One. And a half. So what we're going to do, we're just going to get all this goody mixed up. What we're going to do, because I've already sprayed this pan so we're going to put about half of this in the bottom and that's good to go all right you guys i feel like we are ready to roll out some cinnamon rolls so what i'm going to do is i'm going to sprinkle a bunch of flour down because the dough we did make is very sticky. We are ready to make cinnamon rolls. Our dough is ready. It's beautiful. We are going to sprinkle some flour. We need some flour on our rolling pin. Now, like I've told you, not going to be perfect, but it's going to be delicious. Edges aren't perfect. That's okay. They never are. We are going to take a softened stick of butter. We're just going to paint some butter on. Let's get some brown sugar and cinnamon down. I 
I usually don't do exact measurements because you don't know how big your rectangle is going to end up being. I'm terrible at doing by the book. I usually end up adding something when I try a new recipe or find a recipe I like. I'm really bad about adding stuff or tweaking it or not quite following the directions. Okay, I went and washed my hands. So let's get ready to roll this. What you're going to do is you're going to start right here closest to you. And you're just going to start rolling. Once I get a pretty good roll established, I like to start pulling a little bit so it makes it a little tighter. Don't pull enough that you tear, but just pull enough so you don't have, it's not super loose either. So I'm going to start in the very center. I'm going to make them about two fingers wide. So we've got our pan that we did for the cinnamon sticky buns. And then we've got our pan that's already been sprayed for regular cinnamon rolls. We're going to just take our dough. I always start in the very center of the cinnamon roll because that's usually where the fattest pieces are. And I just kind of work my way around. So these are going to be ready for their second proofing, which will go in the refrigerator all night. And they will rise when Miss Marcy pulls them out and bakes them in the morning. We will finish by doing our icing for these because I will send icing with her as well. So let me clean up and we'll do that. Alright, so let's make some icing real quick. In the mixer I have 6 ounces of cream cheese, soft and a third cup of butter that is soft with my whisk attachment and we are going to whisk that and let that come together for a little bit okay so now we are going to add two cups of powdered sugar but i'm going to add a cup at a time so that it don't blow up like a snowball in here. But the second time we are going to add some vanilla with it. That is vanilla bean paste. I absolutely love it as opposed to vanilla extract. We're going to get that well incorporated and then we're going to kick it up a notch and get it super smooth. Alright, 
I scrape the bowl one time so that we know everything is getting incorporated. No clumps. Okay. have icing so I'm gonna get this icing all packaged up and I'm gonna show you guys what our rolls look like after they have risen in their pan for the second rise then I'm gonna bake them and show you our finished product these rolls are oven ready and we are gonna bake them at 350 for about 25 minutes and as soon as they come out we're gonna put butter on top and let it sit just a minute so that the tops don't get hard so here is our finished product they've been baked they've got butter on them and now the family is gonna enjoy them so Rhett's got some words to tell you yeah. look at the camera Good job. Can you have candy yet? Can you have candy yet?